Yeah, here in Kenya, there are two uh, filmmakers who've been able to do self-distribution and they use their own platforms. And so people come and pay a small fee and you are able to, to buy to watch the film. So people are already creating their own solutions because when you think about uh, a distributor coming in the middle, you're not sure what kind of business model they what they use, or maybe you don't have confidence in them. That's one. But if you can, if you feel that you can, you know, you can do distribution for yourself and you have a platform, then why not? Putting the pieces together, your work doesn't end there. Because if you if it is where it ends, of course, that separates the difference between. The, the guy who is going to excel in what you are doing and the guy who is just going to do it for passion. Okay, you will be able to make some money to, to leave the minimum, no? but you are going to see the difference. No? You could simply take this anywhere in the, indus in the industry. No? You could look at Jay-Z, for example, or Rihanna, or many of these big industry players no? who, who have been able to excel so much. You see that uh, they are not just artists as it were, but they are also business people that they know the business size of the content that they are creating. So I'm not saying that uh, having exclusive and unexclusive rights is the way, but make smart decisions because this is your business, this is, this is your baby, you've spent money to produce. So also equip yourself with skills of how all these TV stations and platforms acquire, do they take exclusive rights, um, are they taking multiple rights, and if so, are they paying for them? Which territories will your content show? Hi, I'm Obehi Ewanfu, the author of the storytelling series for small businesses and content creators. In Obehi Podcast, we talk about the power of your story, your narrative, and why you should own your voice. Whether you are a small business owner, a content entrepreneur, or you simply want to build your influence, storytelling is probably going to be your best instrument to connect with your audience. So join the awakened few who are owning their voices. Now let's get started with today's episode. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Obey, for having me for the second time. I believe our first time was pretty intense and a lot of resources and information was shared and we said we'll follow this up. And I'm glad that you brought me back to, you know, dive deeper into issues about content marketing and distribution. And just also just to review what's happening in the industry, what changes are there, you know, how we can keep improving and how we can keep growing our film and broadcast and media industry in the continent. But I'm really, really thank you. Uh, thankful for having me and yeah, looking forward to the conversation. Thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah, the last time that we were here, we really had a good time and people like uh, what we shared here related to um, the content, of course, basically uh, content is a king, uh, we will always say, because it helps us to be able to establish who we are, what we do, and how we do what we do, and of course, who we serve. And that is, of course, at the centerpiece of what we have today as a conversation in terms of content, uh, content distribution. Now, uh, let's uh, start from the basis. I believe that there are some people out there who do not know what it even means by content distribution. Since that is at the centerpiece of our conversation today, would you like to sort of give them a kind of head up of what is even mean by that? Yeah. So first, we have to appreciate that the ecosystem in, the, in our industry has really changed over the last couple of years. So like for now, there's a digital migration happening in most countries, like in Kenya, it already happened, and many other African countries. So there's that. And then there's also a lot of social media platforms coming up with all these new influencers who are now content creators as well. But still, there's the content creators who create dramas, films, documentaries, and the likes. So with all this, you, your question would be, where does each of these content stand? And do they work inter, uh, interconnectedly? Do they work together? 
what areas of synergy can they work? So in terms of marketing, of course, you'll see you launch a movie and then you'll create social media platforms where you can uh, showcase the marketing materials. It's, these are the trailers, behind the scenes, stills images, you know, be, behind the scenes videos and fan clips. So there's a lot of connection in all that. And also there are opportunities to monetize on this content because content marketing, content distribution, monetization, the PR around all this, the, it works connectedly. So for anyone who's asking what distribution is, is all about, distribution is what methods you put together to make sure that people get to know about you, the content that you create. So if you have a short film, uh, what methods do you want it to get to your audience? Is it through a film festival? Is it through uh, Netflix? Is it through Showmax? Whatever platform you choose. So that's the, the way that your audience will consume your content. And the marketing are the tools that you use now to create this awareness for your content because you can't create a movie and no one knows about it. So if you choose to create a website to do media tours, radio, radio shows, and all that, then that's how you market it. And PR is just the strategies around, you know, creating a good vibe around it and continuity of, of the conversation around your content. So Thank yeah, so uh, just to break it down, distribution is about reach. Where does your content reach? Secondly, how do you monetize on it? And third, what impact or call to action are you intending to achieve with this content? All right, that is very interesting. Uh, of course, I say interesting in the sense that uh, looking at the African population today, uh, which are uh, predominantly young people, uh, the tools of the age, the tools of the 21st century, uh, uh, internet and mobile phone and the computer. Uh, this is something that is uh, very common among younger people, which means that people in Africa, particularly today, are able to leverage the possibility that they have in their hand, which is uh, the use of the tools of the age. Therefore, they are able to connect, they are able to create, and they are able to leverage their, their creation. So in this sense, uh, how do you first see the possibility of being able to level up uh, in the in the world that we live in, the economy that we have today, which is about a service-based economy. By this, I mean uh, you could be somewhere in Kigali or somewhere uh, in in uh, in, um, in Nairobi or in Lagos or Johannesburg, and you could be doing a lot of businesses with somebody that is in China or in Canada or in US or in India. Nobody is actually limiting you by the language that you can speak. Of course, if you can speak English, it becomes a little bit more easier for you because then it means that the audience or, the, or your audience is larger now. But of course, even if you were to take the argument, uh, say maybe within a particular country in Africa, say you are in Kenya, you want to service people that are within Kenya, uh, people that are not necessarily outside of the country, you still are able to do a lot of things because like you said, uh, when you are dealing with uh, content marketing, you want to be able to let people know what you are offering, what you are doing. There are a lot of businesses, they don't know how to do this. And if you know how to do it, in that you are able to help them to reach their, their client, which is which means that you are bridging the gap between them, you are able to make a lot of money out of this at the end of the day. So this is where I'm sort of going in, in that what chances, what possibility do we have in Africa today, looking at our population, looking at our demography, and looking at the opportunity of the time that we are living in? What do you want to say about that? Okay, so let's start with the data conversation that we had already started in the other in the other conversation we had. And we said that when you have the data and the research and the statistics, it is easy to approach even potential donors, potential sponsors and partners to come on board and partner with you. But it's not possible for all of us to be able to afford uh, companies like Geopol, Ipsos, 60 decibels who do research a lot in, 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 in the motherland. So that said, uh, social media has created the avenue where people are able to more, to track who are watching their platforms, who are watching the, their shows. So one, there's the data aspect. Two, there's collaboration that has been encouraged through social media. So like if you go on TikTok, you'll see people doing TikTok live and a celebrity in Kenya collaborating with another one. So that's another thing. Then for the filmmaker who's asking what opportunities are there, I would say think global because we are here to solve global issues. 
Uh, I'll give an example. Uh, if you're entering content for a film festival, you're given the criteria based of submission based on different genres. So for instance, let's say the theme is climate change. It doesn't matter where you are, where you, where you produce your show, you can submit your show as, as long as it meets the deliverables and the specifications that have been given. So you submit whether it's in Chinese and you open the captions there for people to, to listen in. And I got to see like really, I've seen really great content which has transcended the barriers of language. So I would say technology has broken those barriers because we are able even to translate online, the apps are getting more and more accurate in how they translate. So uh, look at it from the opportunities that are coming as a result of the technology, because you're able to measure where is your audience so that you can curate more uh, content centric to that side. So if you're, for instance, and then also another thing I think we also talk, talked about was the segmentation of our industry. So you'll find the content that's watched, watched in Nigeria, and even in Nigeria itself, it's a, it has its own demographics and its own market segmentation. And then Africa also has Francophone, Anglophone. So Nigeria being an Anglophone country has the way they consume their content. We are in the East African region, Eastern African region, which speaks Kiswahili. But you'll find that the content that's seen in Tanzania doesn't necessarily resonate with Kenyans and vice versa. And so how do we create these synergies where our content can transcend and break the barriers of, of, of territories and all that? Is it through language? Is it, is it through dubbing and adaptation of, of different languages from our content? Because that also works. So those are the things, the strategies, probably even as a filmmaker, as you're thinking ahead, think global, think of content that's timeless, think of content that it's tried and tested in terms of resonating to a wider audience because you want at the end of the day to meet us, to be able to be seen by as many people as possible. You know, that is something that I found uh, really interesting when you look at the um, the African people, the African uh, context, as it were, uh, in that within Africa, for example, you know, it depends also on our level of understanding of even our history. We have been interacting among ourselves for several thousands of years, even without the intervention of anybody, you know. Uh, migration have been moving from north to south or east to west. People have been changing. History have been built, destroyed, built again, cities, civilization, which means that networking and collaborating has been part of us. But only recently, we, we, we find it almost impossible to collaborate among ourselves. Uh, if you want to move to do anything, we need to look, first of all, learn how to collaborate with the European, then from the European, come back to collaborate with other Africa, which is something really very absurd. But anyway, where I'm going there is that, uh, what chances do you see there for us able to network among ourselves as content creators? So that like you were saying, maybe somebody is creating content uh, in Nigeria and this content, he or she want this content to be consumed in, uh, okay, in Ghana, it will be very easy because we are just near neighbor there. Uh, even if you had to go to South Africa or things like that, okay, because of the special connection. But so maybe you want to take this content glo uh, kind of... Um, uh, continental wise in Africa, what do you see as a strategy to to go about it so that it can be successful? Uh, in the sense that you can penetrate the the local market within the African continent. Yeah, help me with that. Okay, one is through collaboration amongst ourselves. So imagine a project where, uh, like I saw, Netflix had brought in people from different countries. So there's that appreciation and curiosity of each other's cultures. And that's something I really yearn to see people doing, like having script writers from Kenya, you know, all these different crews from different sites so that everybody's bringing a whole new and, you know, fresh idea on the table, especially in the conceptualization stage. So how we go Pan-African is through collaboration. There's no magic around it. It's for you to sit down, network with people, attend these networking events, find who's creating what, what, who's producing what, and then work with them. Secondly, the other thing that you make sure that you go, so the other thing, one, uh, as I mentioned, is uh, collaboration amongst ourselves. And secondly, making good use of these platforms that have a part African reach. And VODs, I think, are, are doing that because like right now when you sell content to most of these 
uh, VODs, they give you worldwide rights. So that can help you in marketing because people will ask you, where can you can you watch your can I watch your movie? And that's one of the challenges that we I see with filmmakers and even uh, the audience will be asking, where will I watch this movie? You you've shown me a trailer, but where is the movie? So the other thing is also as a filmmaker is make use of collaborate also with other social media platforms or do do a free uh, or private screening on YouTube so that people can engage because you remember also you're you're just you're not creating just for entertainment and monetization maybe you're creating so that you can pass a message like right now uh here in Kenya there are so many demos demonstrations going on and if maybe you've created a movie around it around uh, social change and all that then you need to know maybe Netflix may not be the right platform to take your content maybe you need to take it to a free to air station which has more reach and it targets the uh, the Kenyan who's on the gra- on the grassroots so you also need to understand where is your audience how are they consuming your content and that's where now the data conversation comes so yeah those those are the strategies i would ask the filmmakers or creators to consider Thank you for that, Lucy. All right, now, because we are talking of content uh, distribution, uh, now let's uh, learn from you, your own approach, uh, because you are a content creator and you leverage, you are doing this as a business, you are not just doing it for passion. So share with us, uh, what is your strategy? How do you approach uh, approach content marketing yourself? Okay, so I'll give an example of a film that I was part of the crew and I was also consulting for them on the, on the distribution side. So being part of the crew, you're able to see the challenges and the gaps that are there. So for instance, you'll be on set, but no one is recording behind the scenes and they are like really good captures right there. So those are the things I was able to point out like, hey guys, how someone taking pictures of, you know, this scene, it will really look good just to create that hype and momentum because also you want to build anticipation for the audience to wait for this film. So that's one, being on set and just having that appreciation of where the budget goes, what if, what everyone's role is, you know, do behind the scenes of people doing makeup, do behind the scenes of people uh, interacting or in a certain scene and all that, or record even small videos, then also have uh, the bio information of all the actors. That's a lot of material that you can also use as BTS. So being in that space, I was able to see how filmmakers, they mostly focus on the creative side and they they forget that film is a business. So in a business, you need the proper documentation, you need to, to package yourself properly. So what happens after you finish shooting the film? I think also you should sign clauses with the actors that they should also help you with pushing this content. You know them, they finish acting in a movie, the next week they're in a different set. But if you have contracts with them and also work with radio stations and newspapers, TV, for these appearances just to create that conversation and make it ongoing because sometimes it's just so much buzz, a movie is launched and that's it. So find a way to keep the conversation going. And another way is maybe open up some rights instead of giving all exclusive rights to a certain platform because you'll find a station that has VOD, DTT satellite, uh, DTT, uh, DTH satellite, and they also have a VOD platform. So you, maybe you give all the rights and then here comes someone else who may want to acquire the content. So I'm not saying that uh, having exclusive and unexclusive rights is the way, but make smart decisions because this is your business. This is this is your baby. You've spent money to produce. So also equip yourself with skills of how all these TV stations and platforms acquire. Do they take exclusive rights? Um, are they taking multiple rights? And if so, are they paying for them? Which territories will your content show? So just don't focus on the payment clause or how much percentage you'll be paid on signature, but focus on those other clauses because they, they're the ones that come to haunt you later. How long is the contract and those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. With me now that <laughs> as a content creator, as as an artist, as the person who is um, uh, sort of um, putting the pieces together, 
your work doesn't end there because if you if it is where it ends, of course that separates the difference between the the guy who is going to excel in what you are doing and the guy who is just going to do it for passion. Okay, we we're able to make some money to to leave the minimum, no? But you are going to see the difference, no? You could simply take this anywhere in the industry. In the industry, no? You could look at Jay Z, for example, or Rihanna, or many of these big industry player, no? Who have who have been able to excel so much? You see that. Uh, they are not just artists as it were, but they are also business people. Either they know the business size of the content that they are creating. So that yeah. it is not just to come on stage and dance. It doesn't end there. If you, are a, if you are a singer, for example, or if you are a movie actor or actress, your role, okay, I understand that your role is to act, to, to, um, uh, uh, to play the, the script that I'll be giving to you, but that is not where it should end. You should also try and understand what make it work so that you can you can build a business off of your talent, off of your knowledge. That is what actually separates the people because what you are explaining helped me to actually understand, uh, helped me to actually reinforce this part that you need to understand what is going on within the within your network, within your industry. All right. Having said yes. that, do you think that maybe there are some pitfalls that content creators should understand about distribution? What do you have to say about that? Yeah, because the, this is a this is an ever changing industry. So, like, what people are watching during COVID, and that's when like all these uh, short video platforms really rose because people are just looking for you know stuff to keep them busy during that time. And then there's a season, probably based on the country you are. People are creating certain themed kind of content, also based on the culture. So have an understanding of where you are. You can, it doesn't mean that you, you have to follow what everyone is doing. You can always bring in, bring in a new idea. And come to think of it, we're not just talking about content to go on VOD and they can only have enough of us. We are too many. There's, every one of us is a creator because you have a phone and you're creating a video, which you can say, oh, by the way, if I edit this one, it can be a good uh, clip to maybe create awareness on a subject. And even mobile film, film festivals now. But that said, think of all the platforms you can sell your content. And I cannot exhaust the list. There are so many VODs. There are so many types of VODs. And they're coming up. They're free to airs. They're pay TV platforms. All these uh, opportunities. And also podcasts are coming up and a lot of audio content. Is there a way you can repurpose this content? Because... I feel you you can get also value from one show. Like for instance, let's say you're doing a lifestyle show and there's a lot of makeup, shoes. How about on the side you also create interstitials that uh, showcase lifestyle uh, tips on dressing, on makeup, on hair, or you know just any tips from the celebrity. And as I said, make good use of these guys when they are on set because once they leave. It may be hard to keep bringing them back. Hey, we need to shoot, and then enthusiasm will be gone. So make good use of that energy on set and say, hey, guys, you're watching this, and just keep those clips. You're going to edit them later for posting. And, of course, as, as also we said, packaging yourself properly. So I think the pitfalls you're talking about is uh, the lack of knowledge, first of all, because film schools probably they have now started to introduce the business side of the film industry because I've been called also to listen to pitching uh, ideas from film students. And I'm always there to capture the distribution side. And there's very little information of what is required. Then they wanna create whatever, they have very good ideas, they'll have the storyboards, scripts and all that. But my question at the end is always like, what? where are you taking this movie? Who are you making it for? Is it for the film festivals? Is it for streaming? Is it for pay TV? Who do you want to see this film? What age? Where are they? What What do they like? How have you profiled your potential audience? And so once you start doing that and understanding also the, the industry itself in depth, then you'll be able to also make the work of the distributor easier. And remember, distribution doesn't necessarily mean a third party. Even yourself as a content owner, you're the distributor of your show. So it starts with self-distribution. And then you can, actually, you can even break even by doing your own self-distribution. I know a lot of people who've sold their shows and they are by, by, by themselves. 
or you hire someone in the department who understands this TV side. And there's a lot of stuff also that ties into that, like understanding the IP rights, understanding your rights as well. Because if it's a co-production, how do you divide these rights? Uh, if it's a commission project, you know you, you know that you don't own the IP, the IP is owned by the person who funded you. So I would say it's always good to do your research, even though you're passionate about filmmaking, go into it as a business person, with a plan from the beginning as you're putting up a budget for production, have a proper budget for distribution because it's it's not cheap, especially if you decide to do it alone. Even like if you produce a film and you need to go to festivals, most festivals may not pay for your accommodation and transport. Some do, especially for nominees, but not all of them. And you may approach your government and not all of them will fund you. And I think one of the things I should have mentioned earlier when we were talking about how to bridge these gaps is uh, what, what's happening is our governments are signing treaties. So it will be possible for co-production to be happening in different countries, Kenya, Zambia, Kenya, South Africa, Kenya and Zimbabwe. So then there's a process of all these treaties being signed around the creative industry. And it will help uh, also to, you know, map the locations that people can work with one, incentives and rebates and all those uh, financial gains. Yeah. So you were talking before about the, um, I think so, some government treaties that might maybe help uh, in terms of distribution of content. I don't know mm -hmm. if you want to elaborate a bit about that. Yes. I think the, the highest entity in every country is a government and then the people. So the government through its policies is able to influence a lot of decisions around every sector. So every country is unique, obviously, and with their own unique ways of doing things and their own challenges. A lot of countries are trying to make progress in terms of, you know, creating associations and guilds and all these platforms where filmmakers, you know, can have their own sit down and, you know, analyze what's working for the market and, and what's not working. And they're able to influence decisions at the government level. So I'll give an example, like here in Kenya, I know Netflix and our government are, were, I was invited for our session where they were giving like insights on incentives that the government can create. I don't know, it's worked in other countries. So that's, the, that's one level. So if our governments are able also to sign treaties and agreements where, you know, we can collaborate and co-produce and all that, and you get offers to do that, then it will be really great. Uh, I, that's top of my mind. That's what I would I would suggest. Uh, now, I'm sort of also wondering, because we are talking of uh, distribution, and we are looking at uh, Africa, but of course, we could also look at um, uh, places where uh, African people have influence. Uh, maybe you are looking at Canada or UK or the United States. But of course, you are in Kenya. Maybe you are more uh, concerned with what is happening uh, in Africa, which for us is a good thing because we are we are concentrated on African diaspora. But of course, also what is happening in Africa because our intention is to bridge the gap. Let us leverage our own experiences. Let us connect among ourselves. You benefit from me, I benefit from you. That is how we are actually going to grow. All right, now, let's let go back again to Africa because that is important for us. Now, uh, in terms of uh, content distribution or film distribution, or movies or other uh, content, which are the bigger players uh, that are sort of dominating the market in terms of the distribution? Okay, so uh, Showmax and... DSTV have been doing a lot of commissioned shows where they are, they send out a brief to the industry. Yeah, so they send out a brief to the industry and they ask for people to send in proposals for a certain genre of content. For instance, let's say it's a movie, it's a, it's a feature film, and maybe this genre, so you and your team, you sit down, come up with the concept, and yeah, you present it to them for consideration and they'll give you funding to produce it. Uh, the other thing that's happening is adaptation of different, um, for instance, Bollywood content. So you get the, the scripts in English, you'd adapt it to the language of the country. The other thing is adaptation of already done shows and adapted into different local languages. So that's another 
with another thing that's happening a lot uh trends yeah <clears throat> so all those are the trends that are happening in terms of stuff coming from it outside and trying to grow the industry so i think what i want to see more is our yeah. content traveling you know if i produce a drama in kenya i want to see travel across africa across the world and i think since you're mentioning also the diaspora uh people and also the people the black people everywhere who are conscious and you know looking for different afrocentric kind of content do they have a one stop shop so well there are all those all these platforms like iroko africa movie channel and all those that are trying to do that and also i'm seeing netflix is also trying to buy more and more uh afrocentric content but also for them it's also a game of numbers like uh they will support more of an industry that has more subs because that's the problem uh, that they probably experience here they have so many netflix accounts but they are not monetized so even when it comes to them investing back probably there is a little hesitation there but yeah i would say dstv uh, definitely has been here for so many years so they have because who commands the industry it's anyone who's able to reach every country with very little ch- challenges so dstv showmax of course by extension go tv and then in different regions there are different players so like in east africa we also have azam in east africa we also have azam we also have star times and other little small players then now we go to the streaming side i mentioned showmax they are also doing a lot uh, i'm sure you've seen a lot of promos especially for lifestyle content and films and dramas that they are doing a good job so regionally i would say those are the ones but also if you go now to nigeria okay so yeah so like in nigeria uh, the trend is probably uh, let's let's say that the cinema culture which i think we started a conversation around last time and i was telling you like in kenya we have very little very very few cinema so there's no vibrant cinema culture here and even the films that are come on cinema most of the people go watch uh the blockbusters but marketing and selling a kenyan film really does not work in the same way but on in the other side of, of, of west africa you see there's a cinema culture even in ethiopia where or just community based uh, screening places or even in northern nigeria kanywood So if you think of all these industries and how people consume uh their content and does it monetize because I, when I I said it I said how how you measure distribution and the success of distribution is you've been able to meet to to get your target audience to watch your content one and secondly you've been able to monetize and the impact the impact can be monetary it could be you know call to action because if you're making a, f- a film to create awareness about election peace and all that then it means you talk, you need to make sure that well it, people in diaspora can watch it but they're not the ones living here and all that incitement so making sure that the content is reaching these right people yeah so those are the top top platforms that are funding films in different spheres and um, the other spaces will be festivals but uh also like film uh, Kenya Film Commission here in Kenya is also giving money but maybe to produce short films and uh feature films as well so yeah gov- that's where that's why it is said the role of government is really important so that because it sort of sets the precedence of how everyone else responds to the industry all right now let's talk a bit about um, the monetization strategy now um, how should people um how do how should people master this art of monetization of the content that they create of course this is part of what we were talking about before that you should just consider your content just in and itself that that is the whole of it you need to think of all the ideas around the need how you can build a business around it so that your your content should not be seen only as a content it should see as a business too as a business strategy for you uh, so uh, but my question sort of is um how can people uh master it where should they start from what are some of the things that they need to know so that they can become so that they can leverage their content in a better way i won't mention names but sometimes 
people will wait for sort of like a breakthrough to get into a, a certain platform and the decisions to do the acquisition sometimes take time. So can you imagine a situation where you have to wait and wait until probably the show has expired, uh, sorry, the show has gone past six to eight months and it's sort of like a time bound concept. So I would say cast your net wide. Those are some of the strategies. Cast your net wide, have an understanding of the industry. And even, uh, I'll give you a good example. Here in Kenya, yeah, here in Kenya, there are two uh, filmmakers who've been able to do self-distribution and they use their own platforms. And so people come and pay a small fee and you are able to, to buy to watch the film. So people are already creating their own solutions because when you think about uh, a distributor coming in the middle, you're not sure what kind of business model they what they use, or maybe you don't have confidence in them. That's one. But if you can, if you feel that you can, you know, you can do distribution for yourself and you have a platform, then why not? But then there's a danger because uh, I've seen a lot of people creating these platforms for themselves. So I'm I'm just wondering for a, a normal person who probably have cannot afford to spend maybe ten dollars a day on internet on date on data and all that, how would they be able to watch all these films which are in all these different spaces? So I think that would really help us if we have a central place where our content sits and and also you're able to have access to the back end to see how is the audience consum consuming your content how many minutes did they watch? What did they like? Did they leave a comment, you know, so that you also engage with your audience and know what you can plan for them in the future. Yeah, I don't know if I've answered your question. Yeah, 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 that, that, that's fair enough. Uh, but I was um, sort of uh, wondering, uh, looking at, for example, some of the big players at the international market, like uh, Amazon Prime, and even looking at uh, maybe somebody that is writing a book, for example, and they make the book available on Amazon, uh, if somebody want to buy this uh, book to read, uh, maybe this book will be translated uh, or maybe it will be transformed into audio format and it's available as a podcast, but of course it's gated. No? It's not something that you can access easily. You need to pay money to be able to access it, of course, to help the, the content creator. And say maybe the platform where this uh, content is sitting is Amazon. How easy is it uh, in Africa to uh, go online to buy or to pay so that you can access this content? Whether you are talking of books, you are talking of video, you are talking of music. Uh, help me understand that. Uh, I don't have the latest statistics on like data and smartphone penetration in the in the continent, the latest data. But uh, going by what has been happening, there is a lot of uh, telcos that have set up in the continent, like here in Kenya. I know you know Safaricom and it's really big. They've expanded to Ethiopia and their biggest play platform is the M-Pesa, which is a mobile money which blew the world and everyone else now is doing it. So here's the data side on how people can afford this data to buy the content and having the proper gadgets that support that. And also the question we should also be exploring is are people still watching TV? Yeah, so people are people are still watching TV. There's a really big audience there. People are still listening to to radio. So as much as we are embracing all these technologies, then there are there are still the older platforms that still work really well. And as I said earlier, then it's our upon us to find how we can synergize and work together with all these platforms. So if you have uh, content that you can repurpose for another platform, then well and good. Uh, for, so, so, for instance, like radio, you'll see that maybe they'll ask for shorter content. So are you able to edit it to fit that that platform? If you have a podcast, the same, like what do you need to make sure that you're recording for all these spaces? Yeah, so move with the times, uh, take risks, uh, learn from others, collaborate. It's going to help a lot, a lot to just have that understanding, in-depth understanding of what your industry represents. And what has worked. And one thing I also like doing is just talking to people who I feel have succeeded in distribution, in marketing, and just see what strategies they put in to make sure that it worked for them. So you'll find the, the person I mentioned earlier about self-distribution, 
there are other people who've done multiple businesses with streaming platforms. So back to what you asked now about now the complexities or, or easiness of buying uh, anything online, I would say uh, the the urban or uh, the urban of people with access to gadgets and all that they they do that very easily because I said like we we are the people who pioneered mo mobile money so we easily use our phone to buy and sell different things on our gadgets if you have a business actually everything we pay on mobile money here in Kenya most people just transact on mobile money so that's the you know the payment structure and the the technology side I would say. Maybe a lot needs to be done to just support simpler gadgets. And, uh, and also remembering that there are, there's a big, big audience on the TV side of content. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for that. Um, now, yeah, you have said a lot uh, about uh, content distribution and content uh, marketing, like we promised to, to talk about in this episode. And now uh, people want to connect with you. They want to do business with you because you're also here for, for business. Um, and that is, that is legitimate. Now, how can people connect with you? Uh, use this few seconds to promote yourself. Please go ahead and do that. I should mention that we are setting up two key uh, content markets. So one is called Business Arena, which will be hosted at the 9th Sotambe Zambia International Film Festival in September. So Business Arena is a three-day three content market, which will be at the Zambian Italian Cultural Center from the 27th to the 29th of, of September. And then a month after that, at the Mashariki African Film Festival in Kigali, we'll also have a content market there called Masharket Kigali International Film Content Market. So I encourage uh, filmmakers to just visit our social me media pages. So for the Kigali market, search at Masharket. And for the, uh, for the Zambia event, search at Z uh, Arena Zamif, Arena, A-R-E-M-A -E Zamif, Z-A-M-I-F-F. Find us there on socials. I'll engage with you. But if you want to reach me directly, just email me on my personal email because I, I do a lot of things in the distribution space because even creating events is also part of distribution because a content market is a one-stop shop where different industry stakeholders, content buyers, sellers, distributors, and now incorporating new media, social media. We said we, in, we are including everybody, influencers are part of the conversation, gaming, all these people. So it's a one-stop shop where all these people will be. We have exciting activities in both events. There'll be workshops around distribution, uh, uh, monetization, protecting your IP, and then also on the on the floor on the floor floor of the event, you get to meet different stakeholders. Uh, yeah, and then, then, then there's also there, there's also the pitching session. So. If you have a great idea, especially for the Zambia event, we posted uh, information about how you can submit and we'll have uh, potential investors in the room. So if they love your idea, they'll invest in you. Yeah, so my passion, I'll always articulate that is to see our beautiful stories travel the world. And wherever you are, wherever you travel to, always tell positive African stories so that it always comes for, from us. If you have uh, a podcast, you know, tell positive stories. There's so many beautiful stories that we never get to see. So it's your role to change the paradigm that uh, a lot of injustices in the past through information have taken from us. So keep telling these stories, keep writing, keep networking, keep collaborating. The moment we do that, uh, you know, we help each other, we lift each other up. Let's build platforms that are going to build our industries. Let's see the industry become a, a profitable business, not a hobby anymore. It's no longer a hobby. This is a multi-billion business. So how do we ensure that every one of us is being able to access uh, these profitable ventures? So yeah, also I encourage our, our governments to create proper film schools and incorporate business courses in them so that there's an understanding not just of the technical side, but also of the business skills, and also encourage children to also start learning early. 
in terms of storytelling and we have amazing stories so keep telling them i'm always happy to see all these stories and yeah looking forward to uh collaborating with all of you filmmakers distributors broadcasters everybody and welcome to business arena in zambia and welcome to masharket in kigali and also just to conclude uh shout out to my uh, colleague wangeshi morage she's the ceo of media pros africa so media pros at media pros we provide solutions in content marketing content distribution training we are doing a lot to keep building the profile of our industries. So engage with us. Our email addresses uh, is mine is elmuthui at mediaprosafrica. Um, sorry, elmuthui at mediapros-africa.com. Yeah, let's keep talking. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Let's keep talking. It all starts from there. Thank you yeah. so much, Lucy. I appreciate the time. I appreciate also the conversation. So, of course, it's not the last time we talk, but today, this is where we end the conversation. Of course, we'll come back again next time to, to share more light into what is happening within uh, content creation, content distribution, and content marketing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Behi, for having me. Always a pleasure to be on your podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Obehi podcast and share with your friends who might need it. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you in the next episode.